Hello and welcome inside the ACU TV or studio for the final Optimist newscast of the 2021 to 2022 school year. I'm Ellie Jones alongside Carrie Johnston. Our top stories include the graduation information, the cab crawfish boil, and the coverage of the sports from this weekend, including the WAC championship win for the men's tennis. This is the Optimist newscast. The Men of Galaxy are hosting the 39th annual Kirk Goodwin Run, and it is scheduled for 10 a.m. April 30th at Abilene Christian School. Registration is in the parking lot, and the entry costs $25 for ACU students and $35 for non-ACU students. The money earned from this event is going to provide aid for those impacted by the Eastland fires back in late March. Campus Activity Boards, also known as CAB, hosted their first crawfish boil last Friday. The optimist London Gray spoke with students about their thoughts on the Cajun cuisine. We're here for a crawdad good time. With finals week approaching, CAB invited students to kick back and join in on a crawfish boil at the quad. On Friday, corn, potatoes, and over 200 pounds of fresh crawfish were boiled and spilled. Hands rushed in to claim their food. With bowlfuls of shellfish, people find a seat, listen to music, and enjoy their Cajun cuisine. Jared Yanez, a seasoned pro at the art of crawfish eating, gives some pointers to how to properly dissect the shellfish. So my method is to put my thumb on the bottom of the abdomen of the tail, my other thumb on the bottom of the abdomen of the head, then I pull and twist the head off from the tail. You can either be a true Cajun and suck the juices and the fat, all the savory stuff and the spices out of the head. Then afterwards, you can do the same method to the bottom of the tail, pretending it was this tail meat and the top, which is now the head, and just twisting and pulling it off. Afterwards, what I call like these kind of ribs, I like to just pick them off one by one until you get to the top part, which is kind of like the collarbone. And then eventually, it will just slide out and then just eat it. Among the enthused crawfish eaters are students that avoid the clawed creatures. I don't eat crawfish because I'm not the biggest fan of seafood. Though he didn't make a plate, Mba found his reason to attend the boil. The two wonderful chefs, the two people who cook this beautiful crawfish are my roommates and I, and I will do anything for them, support them through thick and thin, always. The boil allows more adventurous palates to try new things as Ohio native Gabe Lasky eats the crustacean for the first time. Uh, the flavor is very reminiscent of lobster. Consistency definitely goes along with shellfish, but it seems like an awful lot of work for a very little amount of meat. Whether crawfish lovers or not, people left Cab's first crawfish boil with big smiles. For The Optimist, I'm London Gray. As the school year is coming to an end, ACU has confirmed that the graduation ceremonies will be held at the Wildcat Stadium as Moody Coliseum is still undergoing renovation. All students earning a graduate degree will walk the stage May 6th at 8 p.m. The first under, undergraduate ceremony will be held May 7th at 10 a.m., including the Colleges of Arts, the Science and Biblical Studies, and the second graduation ceremony is later in the day at 3 p.m. This will include the College of Business Administration, Education and Human Services, Graduate and Professional Studies, and the School of Nursing. Last week, SGA teamed up with Intramurals to hold its first Olympic tournament. The optimist Shelby Bird gives us a recap on this week's events. Last week, SGA partnered with Intermules to create a brand new event week, Olympic Games Week. Students could sign up their co-ed teams to participate in events such as track, swimming, bouldering, softball, and cornhole. Events earlier in the week were held on the ACU campus, but the week concluded with the cornhole and softball tournament, which were both held Thursday night at the Jane Sellers softball fields at Cal Young Park. Gata's newest intramural director, Emily Mazar, said that this week was a great opportunity to try out different sports and connect with her Gata sisters and Frotz brothers. Um, I'm very grateful that SGA added this week. I think it's been so fun just to be able to try all these different sports and be able to do them with like a lot of different people, um, including like our brother fraternity, Frotz. Um, so yeah. 
Frater Sadala's member Zach Vogel also said that SGA Olympics was a great way to connect with his brothers and sisters and have fun with no expectations or harsh competition. Uh, I thought it's been a fun week. Uh, I thought it was a good bonding experience with Gaeta and a good way for us to go out there and have fun. You know, not worrying necessarily about winning, but just going out there and like bonding and having fun and competing with my brothers. When the dust settled and the scores were in, Team Zebras placed first overall, followed by the Backstreet Boys in second, Gammas plus Siggies in third, Cookies and Milk in fourth, and DT16 in fifth. Individually, Priscilla Brown placed first in the women's 100 for track, Coffee Forsen placed first in the men's 100, Abby Golihar won the women's 400, Hayden Poorman won the men's 400, and the Backstreet Boys won the 4x10 meter relay. In swimming, Aubrey Hudson won the women's 50, Ben Brandon won the men's 50, Kayla McCalmont won the women's 100, Lawson Berry won the men's 100, and the Zebras won the 4x50 meter champ. In bouldering, Mary Margaret Utter won for women, and Ben Brandon won for men. In cornhole, Truman Cuthbert and Boone Denton won first place. And finally, in the softball tournament, the Looney Goons came out on top. Congratulations to all of the winners, and we hope that SGA Olympics Week sticks around for another year. I'm Shelby Bird for The Optimist Reporting. Up next is Carrie Johnston with All Things Sports. Carrie? Thank you, Allie. Wildcat Baseball had an upsetting weekend as they would fall to UTRTV twice. On Friday, the final score was a 4-6 loss. Saturday, the Wildcats started off strong with a 12-2 win in the first game of the doubleheader. Unfortunately, their celebration would be cut short as UTRTV would come back during the second game and beat ACU 7-5. Coach McCarthy shared his thoughts about the back half of the season. Well, the last 10 days heading into RTV were good. And now we've, we've got to find a way to, to, to catch fire here and play well. Play like we're capable. We don't have to play great. Just play good enough. Uh, I think we won't have a chance to win a bunch of ball games down the back stretch here. So we've got four weeks left in the in the regular season. Baseball plays three games this weekend, all against SFA. Wildcats softball had a much different story as they extended their winning streak by four this past week. The first victory came against the Big 12 school Texas Tech on Wednesday with a final score of seven to two. Head coach Farler said this about the big win at home. It, we played exactly how I was hoping we would play. Um, really, it was just clean softball. Uh, we played great defense, we had good pitching, great offense, good base running, and I think uh, we competed really well the whole game, and um, it was all controllable things that we could do and, and repeatable, uh, how we played against Texas Tech, and so I encouraged the team. You saw what you just did against Texas Tech. Now, that's how we just need to play from here on out, and um, nice to be able to see that carry over into the series against Sam Houston. This weekend, softball played three games against Sam Houston. The Friday doubleheader provided two wins with scores of 5-3 and 12-7, with the Saturday finale letting the Wildcats take home the series with a 7-3 win. Men's tennis team traveled to Belmont, Texas to compete in the WAC championship this past Saturday. ACU would upset the number one seed and host school, Lamar, for the school's first ever WAC team champion title, claiming the title with a 4-1 victory. Coach Nunez had this to say about his team's performance after the tournament. Ah, their emotions are crazy. I mean, it's, it's uh, you go from pride, obviously, um, you know, and, and the guys did make history, being the first program at ACU to win the, the WAC conference. At the same time, I, you know, it's like um, timing was just perfect for us, right? Um, with this title now under their belt, the team will move on to the NCAA National Championship with the selection show set for May 2nd at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. The women's team also competed against Lamar this weekend for the championship title. However, would see to the end of their historic season. Lamar would go on to beat ACU 4-3, but not before ACU sent home Grand Canyon empty-handed, making it the first time an eight seed has upset the first seed in a WAC tournament. Although the regular season conference play has come to a close, ACU Golf is going to compete in the WAC championship tournament starting Friday. This postseason opportunity will provide a chance to highlight what training and growth has occurred since their final tournament back in April, on April 11th. Coach Shaw shared his hopes for the upcoming event. I hope to see everybody on time at the van and on the airplane. And, and I hope that when we get to the first tee on Friday that we are relaxed enough to not let the moment of the conference championship uh, overwhelm them. So uh, I think it's more about just getting their mindset uh, relaxed, comfortable, and positive. That's all for our final newscast for the 2021 to 2022 school year. I'm Carrie Johnston. And I'm Allie Jones. Thank you to the Optimist staff and the JMC department who helped make this newscast possible. And thank you to you for tuning in. We'll see you next year.